In the previous chapter, we have created the first Android application. Eclipse with ADT has created an application skeleton for us that we tried with the emulator. Now we're going to have a look into what's inside this project. Let's start with the source directory, SRC, where you can see our com.voxisland package and inside the babysteps.java, so the class that you've seen before. I can also see what's inside and I see the class itself and uh, I can go a little bit deeper and see uh, the different methods. This here there's only one on create. So I'm going to open the code and uh, we are going to have a look into what's there. The very first thing you see that this class belongs to our com.voxalan package. And then we see uh, one import. Uh, we are importing android.app.voxalan, but here clicking on plus, see uh, the other imports that may be there. This class, baby steps, like you see, is extending activity. This uh, baby steps class define, well actually override, the the on method create a public method of uh, this class, so a public method of activity, which is executed when you launch this uh, activity. This uh, onCreate method receives a bundle. We'll see what a bundle is later on. What you can uh, remember right now is that a bundle is a set of variables that will uh, remind the, um, that will be the memory of the application and remind the states the state of the application. So this uh, method will first call the onCreate method of its uh, parent class, the activity class, using super, and pass the uh, bundle and then use set content view of uh, an object, a layout, with a special uh, name r.layout.main and uh, very soon we'll talk about that. Now let's have a look into the imports, one for activity, one from bundle. Let's say I just forget the second one. Then I would not be able to compile, but here you have some uh, kind of help. You have first uh, a warning here, the method onCreate of type baby steps uh, cannot be resolved. And if I move the cursor just here, I uh, have some help. The, the environments propose me different options. The first one, for example, import the bundle, the, the second, create the bundle. So we're going to import the bundle. That's what, miss, what is missing here. The, in, the import is there. The error has disappeared. I'm making the error again, just to show you that I can very easily fix all the import issues. I can ask Eclipse to import all the classes that are missing. It's organize imports. On Mac there is a short key for that which is shift command O. If you are using another system there will be probably also uh, a short key. You, you're going to see that I will use that a lot because it's very convenient to import the classes uh, you're missing on the fly. Another thing very interesting that I'm going to show you right here is this autocompletion. R, which is an object, dot, and then the environment is showing me what is making sense, which for me is going air dot layout dot. Once again, I have some help here. So air dot layout dot main. Very convenient. So I uh, save that, and uh, we're going to go to the gen directory where I see my package and I see a r.java file. So I see a I see a R object. So what is it? First, as I mentioned in the very first line, this file is auto-generated by the system and you should never modify it. You can see this R file as a set of pointers 
uh, and I mean pointers to your objects, the objects you have created, like graphical object, objects, uh, strings. Uh, it's very, uh, very convenient. You don't have to know where your objects are. You can call them directly because they will be referenced automatically in this uh, R class. Uh, so you will see when you when we use it how convenient it is. Next, we can go in the Android 2.1 directory. Uh, well, here you see many different uh, classes in that are embedded in a jar file. Okay, so this of course is the uh, Android API, and this file itself is a pointer to the API so to the to the SDK you do not have to modify anything here you will never modify any file here but it's worth a look you can uh, check uh, some classes if you want see how classes are built for example and here I'm opening it just for the purpose of this demonstration I'm opening a class so this is allowing the environment to compile your, your code. Now let's talk a, a little bit about this assets uh, folder. Um, just a little bit because in this training I'm not sure I'm going to use it a lot. Uh, this is basically where you're going to store objects that are external to your applications. For example, fonts or an external jar file. Can have a look at the res, the resource folder now that we're going to use a lot. You see drawable subdirectories and an icon there. So basically, it's for uh, PNG, GIF, JPEG, and you see a layout directory and a value directory. So let's talk a little bit about the MVC model on which uh, the Android development is built on, and, and it's a model that is used by uh, the last and uh, the most recent uh, programming languages. MVC stands for Model View Controller and wants you to do a segregation between the model, in other words, your data, the controller, in other words, what is modifying the data, the code itself, and the view, in other words, the display. Okay, that's what we see here. The layout is the display, basically XML files which are going to define the, the different screens of your application. Here we have a main.xml. I'm going to open it. I will just maximize this part of the screen. And I'm uh, also going to configure it in portrait mode. So we have a view. So the layout with uh, uh, two tabs here, Layout and XML. So let's have a look at the XML version. You can choose to draw your layout, literally draw your layout with uh, the graphical tool or to code it directly in XML. You can also choose to use both of, the, both of those technologies. Usually uh, beginners try to use the, the, the graphical uh, tool but then you'll see that the more you use it and the more you get used to uh, programming in with Android the more you will probably use the, the XML uh, since uh, there's a lot of shortcuts to quickly uh, code your layout. So we are we have on those two tabs exactly the same layout. I have a line here, hello world, hello Android, and we have a button. Let's check our XML layout. We have a linear layout which is containing a text view and which contains also a button that is defined right here. Okay, we're going back in the layout and we're going to make sure we have exactly the same thing here. Indeed here we have a layout, a linear layout, that's the first item, aka the root item. We uh, 
as an orientation and for linear layout it can be vertical or horizontal and this linear layout is uh, holding a text view and also contains a button. If I want to add a button I can uh, very easily take a button here and drop it here. I can also go in the main.xml I can also go directly coding the, uh, the XML version of it in this file. Now um, I know it's arguable but I would say this button is not as pretty as the previous one since it's not the same size and I have two ways to change that. I can select the button and uh, go in its properties you can see for example its ID right here there are a lot of uh, properties with absolutely no value uh, here you have the text of this button which I can change for hello for example and you can see that the size of the button while well, this button is wrapping the content so let's go down and in the layout properties you can see that this button is configured to wrap its content. So I'm going to change that. So it's wrapping the content for the height and for the width. So I'm going to show you how to change that in the XML. I see my button here with uh, the different properties. Uh, the layout width is wrap content and uh, I will change it for and the editor will help me showing me the different options I will choose fill parent I can save go back in the layout and I have a button that has exactly the same size now let's go back in our baby steps application especially in the class itself this uh, application or at least its layout contains a text and two buttons. Can execute it. I will call now I'm calling my emulator. Hello world, hello Android. One button and one second button. Now where hello world, hello Android is coming from? What does it come from? Because if I check the code of my application, nowhere I have a string with uh, hello world, hello Android. So it's again because of the MVC model where I need to segregate my code, my display, and my data. So if I go in uh, my layout, let's see what is supposed to be printed in uh, this text view. The text view is this line right here. So let's see the properties the layout and the content is at string slash hello so I think it's almost the end of the mystery because now we're going to see what's in the values directory and we have a strings.xml so here also you have two ways to uh, modify strings.xml directly here uh, in this xml editor and we see the string hello with the text hello world hello android okay I'm going to change that for hello chapter 3 or chapter 4 I will keep the name as paper steps I could have made exactly the same change using the resources tab I can access the hello string I see the name of the string and its value I can also add uh, different items to this uh, strings.xml. I'm going back in my layout and indeed this uh, string has changed. So I'm sure you got it. You're supposed to put all the different uh, constant variables in this uh, values folder. I am not necessarily going to do that each and every time in this training just for the purpose of uh, saving time but just remember that it's a good practice to do so. Now let's have a look to android manifest.xml 
this file is very important. It's so important that ADT will uh, give you a special editor for it. Of course you can check what's in this file, in this tab, but you will see uh, different other tabs. So here it is. This file will contain many different information on your application. For example, what are the different activities? Which one should start first? Uh, what are the services? The intents that we're going to see later? What are the permissions required to run this application? If, for example, your application needs the GPS positioning data, then we will need to get them from the US and the US will ask permission to the user. And uh, as you can see, there is a permissions folder right here. Okay, we're not going to detail everything uh, right now. It's uh, on the fly that from time to time we'll go, we'll have to go and uh, change the Android manifest properties. So this file is uh, right now very uh, small, but you'll see that this file will grow uh, when you're developing your the different classes of your application. Now the last file, or almost the last file, default properties. So as you can see here, this file is uh, generated automatically by ADT. You will never edit it. It just contains information that all the tools need to interact with your interaction. I said almost done because let's go in uh, my workspace documents workspace on my computer. I will go in my project baby steps or baby baby steps and uh, I will check the content of this directory and indeed I see my Android manifest.xml and the other files and directory we have seen so far. I also see that there is a bin directory and this uh, directory will contain result of the compilation of my code. In other words, uh, we'll find here a Java bytecode. And then if, I'll, if I ask my system to show me all the files, including the, the hidden files, I see other files dot class path, dot project, and uh, dot settings. Well, if they are hidden, it's just because you don't need to see them. No need to uh, modify them. They are just files created and maintained by Eclipse to store information like the different classes and libraries that you're using or also uh, the preferences that you set in Eclipse. And that's about it for those files. So I can just close this uh, screen. And uh, as you will see, we will uh, now mainly be working in the source directory and the resource directory. That's it for this chapter. In the next chapter, we're going to start writing our first line of code.